beloved ones that are, be, are bereaved. These are hard times, difficult times for the family. Please let's do so. And many others who could have had bereavements. I know Brother Preach, Alice Lungas had a funeral where they were, put, uh, they were burying their mother. Please let's reach out to, to these families and send them encouragements, call them, send them WhatsApp, a text. It goes a long way in these hard times. If you're able to, in whatever way, please reach out to, to these bereaved families and all those who may be sick. After Elder Simamba shares the, the sharing for today, we will have two prayers. I will engage, just look out on your, uh, on the platform, on the chat platform, or in your WhatsApp, I will engage some of you directly and uh, ask you on certain things that you pray for. So please just look out for a chat or message coming from me to you, and then we, we could agree on in those lines. It's difficult to, to state beforehand who is going to pray, because we do not know who's going to log in. So based on the participants that are available online, I will engage you directly or side chat with you. And then you could um, uh, give us a prayer. So we'll have two prayers, three prayers at the end, uh, two from people on the platform and the last one by uh, Elder Simamba. Elder Simamba, over to you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Elder uh, I, I don't know if I'm clear enough. Um, Am I audible? Can yes, you, you are. Oh. Yes, you okay. are. Thank you. Thank you so much. It's very hard to tell if people are ahead unless you ask for feedback. All right. Um, our sharing is going to be brief, and um, it is uh, something that has been encouraging me over the past days that uh, we have been experiencing so many difficult situations, especially now. Now, in our church circles, even in the world over, um, it has been hard for most of the families, for most of uh, our friends. Some of us may not have been hit directly with the current COVID and the, the funerals, the people that have been dying, but of course we have friends and, uh, and families that are uh, so much hit by this pandemic. And so I, 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 thought, I thought I should share something um, from the Bible in this regard. Um, because oftentimes when we are faced with such situations, we get so much discouraged and we, we are filled with fear because we don't know what next will happen. And we don't know who will be announced as one who would have departed from us next. And we are all asking who's next in our hearts. We may be asking those questions. Who is who's going to be the next one? Because I mean, COVID is not choosing, and so we may be filled with fear. And I wanted to mention that fear is what the devil actually uses to, to win God's people from God and to make them lose sight of, 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 of Jesus Christ in their journey. And so I thought I should share something about the gift of the Holy Spirit and uh, what God has said um, about the Holy Spirit and the work of the Holy Spirit while Jesus Christ um, is ministering for us in the in the holy most of most holy place in heaven. Um, before we we just enter or we'll start our sharing, I will invite every one of us to close our eyes and I will whisper a prayer, um, a short prayer as, as as we start the sharing. Shall we close our eyes for prayer? Our Father in heaven, we thank you for this privilege you've given us to share your word. We ask and plead for the Holy Spirit to be with us and to guide us throughout this uh, time that we are having. May you open our hearts, open our minds, that we may receive your word and that we may be transformed by the power of your word and be encouraged through the sharing. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Okay. So when, 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 when we, usually when we talk about the Holy Spirit, most of us, we get our minds to the book of Acts chapter one, where the disciples were promised the Holy Spirit in Acts chapter one, verse eight, when Jesus said, but you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you and ye shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost parts of the earth. And um, 
talking about this, usually we, 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 we use this, this passage when we are talking about evangelism and uh, when we're talking about receiving the gift of the Holy Spirit for the purposes of just reaching out to other people. Um, but I wanted to also add something to this um, passage, to this promise that God has given us. And um, in the book of John chapter 1, verse 11, the Bible says, he came unto his own, and his own received him not. In verse 12, the Bible goes on further to say, but as many as received him, to them gave him power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. So for me, two things are coming out from these two passages. Number one, God has promised the Holy Spirit to make us sons of God, created in Christ Jesus after the new man. That is why in John chapter 1, verse 17, it says, now if any man, in, in, in Romans chapter 8, verse 9, now if any man has not the spirit of Christ, he is none of his. So the Holy Spirit is accepting us and embracing us in the family of God so that we can become the children of God. Number two, the Holy Spirit has been promised to us so that we can glorify God through good works for which we were created. That is in accordance to the writings in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10. Um, now, this power is not in the human agents. The power that God has promised, the power of the Holy Spirit, is not in the human agent. It is the power of God. When a soul receives Christ, he receives power to live the life of Christ. God requires perfection of his children. His law is a transcript of his own character, and it is the standard of all character. So the power that God is talking about in John chapter 1, verse 11, verse 11 and 12, that will be given to those who receive Jesus, it is the power that enables them to live according to the commands of God, to the teachings of God, which is a privilege given to the children of God. So the Holy Spirit has been promised to the children of God so that when we receive the Spirit of God, we are able to live and to walk in accordance to the teachings of, of, of God's words. Ezekiel chapter 36, verse 27, the Bible says, and I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statute and you shall keep my judgments and do them. So in, in, um, in Acts of the Apostles, uh, page 48, the, the pen of inspiration says, every Christian saw in his brother during the time of Pentecost, talking about the time of Pentecost, every Christian saw in his brother a revelation of divine love and benevolence. The ambition of the believers was to reveal the likeness of Christ's character and to labor for the enlargement of the kingdom of God. And so when we receive the spirit of God, he leads us in truth. He causes us to obey God's word. And when the spirit is doing that work in us, it will be evident not only to us as individuals, as ourselves, but more so to the people around us, our fellow believers, our brethren at church, and our neighbors, at, uh, the people that we work with, they will be able to testify. They will see the revelation of divine love through us as evidence of the Holy Spirit working in us. And I, saw, I, I thought I should mention this also because you and I, as we are living in these hard moments, the best that we can do, because we are asking ourselves who is next, it may be a, 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 a question that maybe some may not be asking, but it is important that we ask that question because what we want to leave behind, I believe it's good works. And so we need to prepare for anything at this point because you may be next, I may be next, but every moment that we have been given to live, I think it is wise for us to choose to live to the best according to the power that God has given us, the power that works in us, the power of the Holy Spirit. And so our lives should be testifying to the abiding presence of the Holy Spirit, even as we interact with different people, as we live our lives, let us pray that God should help us so that it will be said of us, even by our fellow believers, 
that we have seen the spirit of God at work in our brother's life because that is the ministry of the Holy Spirit, which cannot be hidden. It's not, it's not supposed to be hidden. It is supposed to be the manifestation that should be giving a testimony to the world, witnessing for Christ and telling the world the power of God working in us. So um, that being said, the, the, the second point that I want to mention quickly is, is that boldness and courage in difficult times such as this can only come through the abiding presence of the Holy Spirit. You know, what, what I mentioned when, when, when starting, I mentioned that the devil likes using fear. When he instills fear in our hearts, then he knows that we can easily sway our minds from the cross, move our attention from, from God's word, and just do things out of fear. And most of us are maybe gripped with fear. Now, I, I want you to know that even when we live in times hard as this, we need to remember that the spirit of God, when he is with us, we shall have such boldness and such courage that no one can understand or explain. And this is what kept even the people of God, the apostles in the apostolic time, this is what kept them moving, even preaching the gospel through um, uh, under difficult circumstances because the power of the Holy Spirit was with them and they could not be intimidated, not even by the high authorities, um, the, the powers that, 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 that were in leadership at the time because of the presence of the Holy Spirit. And I want you and I to recognize that this can only be in us if we sincerely pray for the gift of the Holy Spirit so that we can be bought and courageous enough to face the times that we are living in, knowing that if God will surely be on our side, then no one can be against us. When we face the current situation with the spirit of God, we shall not be afraid. We will have a language that will speak hope to the world, that will speak hope to the hopeless, that will encourage those that may be discouraged as we are aware of many people that are discouraged because they have lost their loved ones, and sometimes they just need someone to encourage them. But when we are filled with the spirit of God, we'll be suitable and we'll be, we'll be best um, used in, 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 the, in the ministry of encouraging those of our friends that may be undergoing hard, 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 hard moments. And the, the final point that I want to bring to your attention is that divine comfort in times of grief comes through the abiding presence of the Holy Spirit. Now, we are people who get broken, people full of emotion, people who get disturbed by the current happenings and the different situations that we face in life. But I want you to know that Jesus Christ, when he left his disciples, as he was about to go to heaven, he spoke the words, found in the book of John chapter 16, verse 17. And I believe he is speaking these words to you and me this very moment. And these are the words that he spoke. And I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever. Verse 17, even the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him, but ye know him, for he dwelleth with you and shall be in you. Verse 18, I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. And these are beautiful words. And these are the main words that I thought I should share with all of you listening to me this moment. Jesus said, I will pray my father to send the Holy Spirit that he should be with you to comfort you in whatever experiences, in whatever um, trials, in whatever troubles that you may face in this world, Jesus says, I will give you comfort through the power of the Holy Spirit because he is the comforter. So whatever you may be going through, child of God, whatever awaits you tomorrow, we don't know what it may be, child of God, be of good cheer because the Lord has promised to be with us through it all. The Lord has promised to give us the comfort that we need. And this comfort 
comes through the ministry of the Holy Spirit. That is why I urge you, dear listeners, dear viewers, wherever you're watching us from, please take time every day of your life, each moment that passes by as we are living in these troubled times. Remember to sincerely pray for the gift of the Holy Spirit to be with you, to give you the comfort that this world can never give you, even though we go through these hard moments. We need to pray for the gift of the Holy Spirit to help us to walk with Jesus every passing moment. Because when we live with Jesus, no matter what may come our way, even when death was to knock at the door of, of, our, of our lives, we will be rest assured that we will die in the Lord because we will only be able to die in the Lord if we have lived in the Lord. And the time that we are living now is the best time for you and I to choose to live with the spirit of God because without the Holy Spirit, we cannot live according to the will of God. The spirit of God is the power that works in the believers to do the will of God. Without the Holy Spirit, we can never do anything that God would have us do. And so I encourage you and I aid you this evening. Please plead like Moses for the gift of the Holy Spirit. In Exodus chapter 33, when he was just coming down from the mountain, he found um, the Israelites had rebuilt against God. They had put up a golden calf and they were celebrating and making noise. And he was just coming to receive the, the commandments. The, then God told Moses, say, you see what these people have done. He was so disappointed with them. And he said, because of what they have done, I choose not to go with you to the promised land, but I will send an angel to lead you through to the promised land. And, and, and Moses responded to the Lord and he said, but how will it be known that we are your people? Is it not by you going with us? Now, I want you to know that as we live today in this day and age, it is through the power of the Holy Spirit abiding with us that we know that God is with us. God abides with us through the Holy Spirit, God the Holy Spirit. And so I want to encourage you that you dare not make a move to do anything without the Spirit of God being there. Without the Spirit of God to start the day with, I pray, I pray that you will not move out of your bedroom. But before you move out, plead for the gift of the Holy Spirit. Before you engage yourself in any affairs of this life, plead for the gift of the Holy Spirit. Every breath of life that you take, lift your soul to God and plead for the gift of the Holy Spirit. Because he is the only one that can give you the comfort that you need in these troubled times uh, that we are facing in this world of difficulties. We will not make it through without the Holy Spirit. None of us will make it without the gift of the Holy Spirit, without the ministry of the Holy Spirit in our lives. And that is why you and I need to remember that Jesus in John chapter 14 says, I will not leave you alone, but I will send the Holy Spirit. He has made a promise. He will give us. But do you ask for the Holy Spirit? Are we willing to receive the Holy Spirit? Are we ready to receive the Holy Spirit so that he can abide with us and walk with us? I pray this evening that you and I, more than anything in this world, will sincerely desire the gift of the Holy Spirit so that he can work in us, so that he can help us to walk in the ways of the Lord so that he can comfort us in times of losses, in times of grief, so that he can give us wisdom on what to do, even when we do not know what step to take, especially when we have such things uh, surrounding us. People are asking, should we close churches? Should we continue going? It is not a matter of just thinking of or saying what you think or what you want, but a matter of seeking God's guidance and wisdom so that we can be helped even in these moments that we are living. So I pray that as we move on, may we sincerely plead for the gift of the Holy Spirit because without him, we will not make it. Without him, we are doomed for destruction. And that should not cause you to be afraid, but that should cause you 
to fall on your, on your knees every passing moment, to lift up your soul to God in prayer each passing moment. You are never safe. I am never safe without the presence of God, the Holy Spirit in our lives. So may this be our daily prayer and our earnest plea every passing moment that the Holy Spirit will always be with us and abide in us and that through him, our lives will be a blessing to our friends and to our relatives and to everyone that we get in contact with because when the spirit of the Lord is working in us, we are going to be inspired of God and we will live a life that will not only um, be a blessing to us as individuals, but even to those that we interact with. I pray that this will be your prayer, even as we move on and as we live in these um, hard times. May God bless you even as we continue uh, pleading for the gift of the Holy Spirit to help us in times such as this, because without the Spirit, most of us will give up on the cross. Most of us will give up on the faith that we have held so dear to our lives. Without the Spirit of God to encourage us in these hard moments, we are not going to make it through this Christian journey. May God bless you and uh, your family as we seek the gift of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And good evening. Amen. 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 Mm. Amen. And we, we, we thank God for using Elder Simamba in such a mighty way. Um, there is no better presence that we can ask for than the presence of the Holy Spirit. Um, Elder Simamba has a song that he sings in Tonga. He says, uh, I think it's uh, Tuma Muya, uh, which is a plea, a request for the Holy Spirit. I wish it was one of those days when he was ready, he would sing that song and it would be a message and song. But it, it, it re-echoes uh, in my mind that we should daily plea and request and beg, if it means so, for the Holy Spirit. Because these times we are living in are times when we cannot afford to make decisions in and of ourselves because they are perilous times and it's only through the ministration of the Holy Spirit. I did mention when we started that I was going to engage some of you um, directly uh, to ask you to pray. Uh, some have not responded. Uh, so I, I, will, I hope that I will not catch people unaware because I will engage them now. Sister Chilifanyonda has responded. She will pray for us and she's going to pray specifically for families that are bereaved. Many families that are bereaved, and those that are grieving, and she will pray that the Lord should comfort these families. Then secondly, I'm going to ask uh, the Sister Nanjaya still online. I did see her online, Sister Nelly Nanjaya. Yes, I am. I'm here. Thank you very much. Th thank you, Mama. I'll request you to pray for the children in the church, our children. You realize that um, there's a, a very different impact on our children. I, for one, have a a child at home, a son, who I think has only been to church, almost getting two years old now. And what is the experience that this young man is going to have of church when most of the time he's been away from church? Some of these are little ones because of these restrictions have been home because they're below the age restriction that is allowed for them to come to church. What is the experience at home when they're away from church? So I'll ask you, Sister Nanjaya, in your prayer to specifically Speak to God about our children, and you're going to ask that the Lord should come through for us, protect them, and also help us as parents to, say, to, to help these little ones, lead them to Christ, even as we are managing this whole pandemic. So we're going to have three prayers. So the first one is going to be given by Sister Nanjaya. The next one is going to be given by Sister Chilufi Anjurenda. Then Elder Simamba will close for us in prayer. So in that order, for those who are able to, please, we can kneel down for prayer. I know there are some who are still in their cars because they just had to park there in traffic. We appreciate. But for those who are able to, please kneel wherever you are and let us have the three prayers in the order that I mentioned. Thank you. Okay, we are praying. Our Father who art in heaven, Lord, we come before you this evening. We thank you for the gift of life. We thank you, Lord, that 
even during these difficult times, you have allowed us to gather in this manner and to share your word and to encourage one another. This evening, Heavenly Father, I bring before you our little children. We thank you for the gift of parenthood. We thank you, Lord, for allowing us to have these children. And at the same time, we are aware that you are going to hold us accountable for how we are going to raise these children and present them before you on the day of judgment. And so, Lord, we call upon your name and we ask and pray that may you grant us the wisdom to be able to raise our children in a manner that will bring glory and honor to your name. For most of us, the church has been a place of solace, a place that has been so helpful to us as we raise our children. We've been able to gather as parents, share parent tips, share nature talk, share a lot of things that have helped us to become better parents. But now we are living in a time where we cannot even gather, where we cannot even carry our children to sing songs of praise to you and to learn. For most of us, it's been very difficult to do it from home. We are faced with so many challenges, but Lord, we realize again that this may continue for some time and yet we do not want this to separate us from you or to lead us to a place where our children are going to be drawn backwards spiritually. And so Lord, we call upon your name and commit them into your hands. But above everything else, we ask and pray that may you send us your Holy Spirit to minister to us as your children so that from us, we are able to, may you feed us that we are also able to feed our children. And even as we are in our various homes and the different challenges that we are facing, Lord, we ask and pray that may you remember to present these children before you, that they may grow to know you even in this difficult time. We ask and plead for wisdom. May you forgive us our sins. Where we've erred as parents, we ask and pray that you forgive us and cleanse us afresh because we realize that the work, this work that you've given us is delicate and it's a privilege and it's an honor. Without you, there is nothing that we can do. Without you, we, we cannot be able to present these children before you in a manner that will glorify your name. And when all is said and done, dear Lord, we ask and pray that may all glory and honor be unto you. May you remember us in your kingdom. May you help us to live the way that you want us to live, the way that you've called us to live. And Lord, should we die, may we die in you. And so we commit our lives into your hands. And I also pray for every family represented here, that Lord, may you continue to watch over us as your children. In Jesus' name we ask and pray, amen. 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 We are praying. A gracious, loving Father above in heaven. Lord, we thank you because you are God. We thank you because you do not change. You are the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. We thank you, dear Jesus, that you will prevail amongst everything that we go through, oh God. We thank you, oh God, and glorify your holy name. We praise you because you are worthy of all the praises. My God and my Father, we come before thee this evening, O oh God, calling upon your holy name once again, praying that you may forgive us of sin that we commit, sin that we commit knowingly and unknowingly. Cleanse us from all manner of unrighteousness. God, as we call upon your holy name this evening, we do recognize, oh God, that there's so many problems in our midst, so many bereavements in our midst, so much anxiety and so much fear that has come into your children, oh God. But because of your word, we have this blessed assurance, oh God, that has come through, that if we call upon your holy name, wherever we are, 
whatever the circumstance and the situation, you will be there for us, oh God. We thank you for your word that has been shared, oh God, this evening. Your comforting word that despite the many challenges that we have, oh God, we may just invite your Holy Spirit to come through and comfort us. And at this moment, oh God, I present the different families that have lost their loved ones. Lord, it is a difficult time because it is a time where we do not mourn the way we know how to mourn. It is a moment where we can't come together, one another to come and comfort each other. It is a point, oh God, where we are watching from a distance. And at times we fail to call upon your holy name, even in the shock that we are in. God, I just want to present the families whose parents, whose children have died of COVID-19 in the different places that they are in, oh God. May you reach out unto each one of them. May you comfort them in a special way. As promised, dear God, may you send the Holy Spirit to be their great comforter. It is only you that is the best comforter that we have on this planet Earth, oh God. And so I plead that you may send your Holy Spirit to be with each one of them, to give them the comfort that is required, oh God, so that even as they mourn their love, the loss of their loved ones, they will mourn with the blessed assurance that we will meet each one of them that have departed when you, you come soon in the next kingdom, oh God. My God and my Father, as a, a church family unit, we have lost our dear loved ones as well. And it is hard, oh God, to think that we can't meet in a manner that is befitting to mourn the loved ones. And yet, dear Jesus, we know that if we call upon your holy name, each one of us will kneel and call upon your holy name. You will be able to hear us and you will be able to comfort us. And therefore, as a family at church, oh God, I just want to pray that you may send the Holy Spirit to be with us as church members, oh God, that we may be strong even in this time that we have now, oh God. I just want to commit the church leadership as well into your hands. They may be overwhelmed, oh God, because of the very many funerals that are coming their way. God, I pray that you may protect them and shield them from COVID-19 so that they are able to spread your word in the way that is expected. Lord, now, as we come before thee, I just want to praise you and ask you again that may you reach out to each and every one of us and meet us at our point of need because we ask and pray all this in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, amen. 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 As we continue praying, our God and our Father in heaven, the world has become a strange place for all of us now. Because everywhere you go, there is fear and danger. And the devil is happy because He's instilling people's hearts and people's hearts with fear. And this moment, Father in heaven, we want to remember your words that you promised us in the Bible that you will not leave us comfortless, but you will send the comforter, the Holy Spirit that will abide with us even as we walk through life's journey. If it were possible, Lord, none of us would desire to live even the next day in this world. But because you live, we know that life is worth the living and we can face tomorrow because you are there. And so we thank you, Lord, because despite whatever may be for us, we have this great assurance that Jesus is mine. And we know that there will be no point when you leave us because you are faithful to your word. 
Have you said a thing and will you not do it? You have promised that you will be with us to the very end of time. And so even when we may go through hard moments, through, through dark moments of life, sometimes our faith may be shaken and we may not be able to see your face clearly because of the darkness around us. But I pray that you may remind us that, that even at the death of Jesus Christ at the cross, when it was all dark around, the pen of inspiration reminds us and tells us that God the Father made darkness his pavilion. And so we pray that you may remind us that even in the darkness that we may be facing in this world, oh Lord, you are there with us. Father in heaven, this moment, I want to pray and ask for the church leadership, starting from the local church and even up to the general conference. Father in heaven, there are so many pressure that may be coming from within and around, O oh Lord, regarding the certain decisions that may be needed to be made, especially as we live under this pandemic of COVID-19, O oh Lord. I plead for wisdom from above. I plead, O oh Lord, for the spirit of God to be with our leaders. I pray, Father in heaven, that you who has said in your word that you have not given us the spirit of fear, but the spirit of power. May, as the leaders are making decisions, Lord, I pray that may they not be moved with fear or emotions, but may they be inspired of you, Lord, and may they do that which you have ordained that it should be done, even in such moments that we are living in. Gracious Father in heaven, we as individuals and as human beings, O oh Lord, we know that what is before us is more than we can bear. But when you are with us, we will sing along even with Jesus in the vessel, knowing that we can smile at the storm because you are there with us. And we know that peace is not the absence of trouble, but it is the presence of Jesus Christ in our lives, even amidst the storms of life. And so I pray, Father in heaven, for the greatest gift, even the gift of your son, Jesus Christ, to abide in our hearts through the power of the Holy Spirit, that we may have this peace that surpasses human understanding, even though we are going through these troublous moments. Father in heaven, I want to pray in a very special way for the church members. The devil is excited because he wants to deal with your people well in isolation, because he knows that when we are not fellowshipping, when we're not meeting, it is easy for him to discourage so many of us when we are in our own homes. I pray in the name of Jesus Christ this moment, Lord, that even in our own homes, I pray that you may visit our families in Jesus' name. May you send your Holy Spirit, dear Lord, to be with us and to fellowship with us, O oh Lord, to strengthen us in our faith, even though we are in our various homes, O oh Lord. I pray just like in apostolic time, O oh God, may our homes be on fire for you, O oh Lord. May you help us, Lord, by your grace to turn our minds away from the world and to fully engage ourselves in the ministry of, of, of Jesus Christ, even in the power that you have given us freely through the power of the Holy Spirit, that we may be able to do marvelous works in this world, O oh Lord. For many of us, we may be uh, faced with these different circumstances, and we think this may be the end of it all. But this could just be the beginning of sorrows. I pray that you may strengthen our faith, O oh Lord, and increase our faith that we may not be shaken by whatever troubles that we may face, because even much greater troubles may be awaiting us. And so we pray, Father in heaven, help us not to lose sight of Jesus Christ. Help us to hold on to the cross. Help us, Lord, to stick to you and to serve you faithfully and sincerely, even under the most um, difficult circumstances. I pray, Father in heaven, that you will always be with us and never leave us alone. For the sharing that we've had this evening, please, Lord, I pray that may, may this message be held so dear to our hearts that we should desire for nothing else except the abiding presence of the Holy Spirit in our lives, that he alone may do that which no man can do in our lives. Father in heaven, even for the, uh, the families that are, are bereaved, the families that are mourning, you know how best to comfort them, O oh Lord, because you understand best the kind of impact and the pain that they are going through. 
we cannot even mourn our friends the way that we've, we are used to because we, we have been told to be in isolation and not to, to, to mingle and not to be there for each other. We are not encouraged to do that, but we pray that the Holy Spirit, who is not limited in where to be, may he move to the houses of those that are mourning and touch their hearts, O oh Lord, like never before. Comfort them, Lord, with the comfort that can only come from above. Minister to them, Lord, the best way you know how. And may they know and testify that the Lord has been with them even through the valleys and even through the valley of the shadow of death. Let them know that you are with them. Father in heaven, we are so grateful because what can we do without you in this world of trouble? We have hope and confidence to face tomorrow because you are our God and because you live. And I pray, Father in heaven, in the name of Jesus Christ, may this hope keep burning in our hearts until we see the Son of Man coming down from heaven to get his children home. I pray that until then, keep us faithful to your word and keep us from falling because we pray and ask in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen and amen. 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 Thank you very much to everyone who managed to log in today for our prayer session. Remember, like I mentioned at the beginning, and I'm, I'm trying by all means to avoid saying this is a virtual uh, Vespa meeting because it is still a prayer session. The weather virtual or physical is still a prayer session. And um, okay. I hope that you have been encouraged. And we pray that as we go in our separate outers, family outers, individual outers, we will still pray. Uh, for the for the things that we are praying for today, we are, we are praying for the grieving and the children among us. Um, as I had mentioned earlier, one major announcement is that we have a bereavement among us, uh, and that is uh, that of the death of uh, Woka Mavoti. And like was mentioned through our various online platforms, uh, we are discouraged from visiting the, the family because of the prevailing uh, health restrictions. But we are encouraging everyone to reach out to the family, send them a message, uh, console them and encourage them. This is the best way you can do it now because of the current uh, situation. We will have another session on Friday and we'll communicate uh, beforehand the link to that session. And Sabbath evening, we have the pastor again uh, leading us in our prayer sessions. Please let us not relent to come through and join in these prayer sessions. If there's anything that we need now more than ever before it is prayer and the presence of God through the indwelling of the Holy Spirit will lead us to that. I pray that we have been inspired and encouraged as we proceed on. Remember that uh, these platforms and this, this, this media is being used to engage us more. And so if you have anything that you need to reach out, you need leadership to reach out to you on, please feel free to reach to us. Uh, the chat section of the, of, of the meeting is always active. We have uh, admins at the back end can attend to any queries. If you need anything, you can reach out to us directly um, and we'll do um, our best to help out. Thank you very much to everyone that came through. Um, at this moment, wouldn't it be good for us to unmute and just say amen to each other? Amen. 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 Thank you. Amen. amen. Good evening. A good evening. Amen. Yes, have a good night. May God richly bless you all. Thank okay. You. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.